In this video, we take a look at a couple of Anvil products that you were responsible for making happen. Full disclosure on this, Anvil did send me these products to share with you guys. You know, it is pretty cool that when a manufacturer pays attention to what the community is doing and kind of steps up and makes things where they're easier for us or gets things that we wanted or requested to be done. So let's take a look at the first item. The first item is a closed loop transfer kit or a transfer kit that's going to prevent oxygen. Now you can use this on the crucible. You can use this on the bucket fermenters. Doesn't really matter. What the kit comes with is a couple of hoses and a couple of ball lock fittings, one liquid, one gas. Now on the hoses, there are two male flare swivel fittings for the ball lock adapters. And then on the other end of those, one of them has a nylon elbow that actually fits into the airlock on the fermenter. And then the other one has the hose barb that comes on the anvil fermenters. And it has like an O-ring and the collar and everything so you can screw it on, which is pretty cool. So it's, it's pretty much a self-contained kit. You don't really need anything else to use with this. Now, if you hang out to the end of the video, I'm going to share a tip with you that can save you a ton of money on CO2 using this kit a little bit differently than what it was designed for. All right, so let's take a look at how to set up and use this closed transfer system. You're going to want to connect the ball valve fitting or the hose barb for the ball valve on the fermenter to the actual fermenter. Just remove the existing barb on there and install this in its place. One tip I can give you that I use with these fermenters, both the crucible and the bucket fermenter, if you put the hose barb or the, the ball valve fitting so that it's in line with the rotating dip tube, I do that so that I can always tell what position the dip tube is in and then when I rotate it I know exactly where it's at in the fermenter. So that's just a little tip for you. So hook that up and then hook the liquid ball lock fitting to the swivel connector on that hose. And then you're going to connect the hose barb, the nylon 90 degree hose barb to the airlock. You're going to push it into the hole in the airlock and then you're going to connect the ball lock fitting, the gas line fitting to the other end of that. You're going to connect the black liquid fitting to the out on your keg or the liquid post and then you're going to connect the gas to the in or gas post on your keg and then basically just run the fermenter as you normally would. Basically open up the ball valve and what's going to happen, the system works off a of displacement. So as the liquid drops in the fermenter, it's going to be displacing any air or CO2 in the keg and pushing it back up through the line through the hose barb into the top of the fermenter. So as the fermenter empties, the keg fills up and the air from the fermenter or the air from the fermenter is getting, the area is getting larger. So it needs more, more air to fill that space. And that space is being filled by the keg as it's, as it's filling up. So that's basically how that works. Now it's not a, a really fast process. One tip I can tell you is the higher you can get the fermenter above the keg, the more gravity is going to work for you and the faster it's going to go. So if you can really stretch those hoses as far as they, they possibly will, set a bucket on a bench or whatever, whatever you need to do to get them up as high as possible, that's going to be the fastest way to get that transfer to occur. Now, the next new item is definitely from, you know, the crowd voicing their opinion. Whenever I first reviewed the recirculation kit, I said this thing definitely needs a stainless steel pump head. And I asked everybody to comment below if they would want one or not. And I mean, you guys really commented every time that Anvil is asked in the Facebook group, the Anvil Facebook group, uh, what, you know, what things they'd like to see or whatever. And a lot of people always say the stainless steel pump head. Well, today we actually have that. And it's really simple to replace it. Basically, all you do is take the nylon pump head off. You're going to leave, leave the nylon base on the pump itself, leave the impeller and everything intact. And then you're going to just replace the nylon pump head with the steel pump head, the stainless steel pump head. And one of the things you want to make sure you do, don't lose the red thrust washer. A lot of people lose those. Don't lose that. Tighten everything down. Make sure that the O-ring is around the nylon base before you put the stainless steel head on, just make sure it's in place there and not still in the nylon head. Otherwise you're gonna have a leak. So get it all tightened down. And then once you do that, basically you have pretty much a whole myriad of options to use the recirculation pump. You can put cam lock fittings on there like I've got here. You can put a ball valve to be able to control the flow rather than having to use that, you know, hose squishing device, whatever that's called. So you can do that. And there's, there's a number of things you can do with it. 
Uh, also, just to let you know, a lot of people ask this question, but the anvil ball locks on the brewing system and the fermenters and all that stuff, they are a half inch pipe thread. I think it's maybe a half inch straight pipe thread because when you put one of those cam lock fittings or something like that on there, you really do have to wrap it with some Teflon tape in order to get it to kind of snug on there and not leak. But you can outfit your whole, you know, your fermenters, your, your everything with those cam lock quick, quick disconnects or, you know, the, the one handed quick disconnects so that they, they will work, but just make sure if you put it on the foundry that you use a lot of Teflon tape and you'll be able, it'll work fine. All right. So now for the bonus tip for the recirculation kit, as you know, I'm a big fan of doing closed transfers and pressure transfers and all that kind of stuff. One of the things that is very CO2 consuming is actually emptying the keg out. What I'll normally do is fill the keg up with liquid, like a star sand solution. And then I'll use my CO2 tank to push that liquid out and then give me an empty keg that's completely full of CO2. So with this recirculation kit, one of the things you can do with it is actually install the gas hose with the hose barb in the top of your fermenter and then hook up the gas line or the gas ball lock fitting to the gas post just like you normally would. And then with your full keg, hook your liquid line up to the liquid post and either dump it into a bucket down the drain, or if you really want to be frugal, put it into another keg. And then as your fermenter builds pressure from under fermentation, it's going to actually push all of that liquid out and, and fill the keg basically with CO2 from your fermentation. And you'll never have to crank on your CO2 tank to push any of that liquid out of your, out of your keg. And if you don't believe me, it definitely works. You could, a normal fermentation on five gallons, you could probably push liquid out of maybe two or three kegs, something like that. You'd be surprised in the first day or two, you'll have all the liquid pushed out of the keg and, and it doesn't require a lot of pressure. I know these, you know, the, the crucible and the bucket fermenter don't hold a lot of pressure, but trust me, it's enough pressure to be able to push that liquid out. So there's a little money saving tip for you. Hopefully it helps you. So what did you think of the new products? So leave a comment down below. Let me know if you think they're, they're worth picking up. I will have links in the description for the products over on the Anvil website. I'll link them up in the description down below. We certainly do appreciate everyone liking and subscribing. That's a, that's a great big deal to us. So we certainly do appreciate that. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.